So for those reasons, um, the industry is going to start taking a look at that because the last thing anybody wants to do is to take someone out of the frying pan and you, put them into the fire. You don't want to be foreclosing yeah. on poor Frank oh, and Mary. absolutely That's not. bad for business. Absolutely not. It's, it's right. very bad for business. So, you know, let's taking a look at Frank and Mary. Let's kind of keep math easy. Yeah. You know, they have a $300,000 home. Let's say they're eligible to access $150,000 of that. It's actually, you know, at their age, at 80 yeah. years old, it'll be a little bit more, but let's keep math but easy. That gives you an order of magnitude. Exactly. Right? So it's about 50%. So it's about 50%. So they're able to access $150,000 to take care of some of the modifications that they need to make, whether it's a roll-in shower, whether it's to widen hallways, cabinets, yeah. a lot of, you know, what Carol does and what Carol has spoken <laughs> to you about. And with the new guidelines, uh, the new rules that were just implemented last October, just mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, during the first year, you're mm -hmm. able to access up to 60% of what you have available. So if I, so if so I. So they have I, 150 yeah. available. Yeah. They're able to access 60% of that in the first year. So it'd be about 90,000. So 90,000, more than enough money to take care of you know, the need that um, they require. So if I, if, I, if I take the reverse mortgage, even if, if I do the reverse mortgage for the entire $150,000. Mm -hmm. Correct. I, only ha I don't have to take all that right away? Correct, you don't have to take all of that right and away. if I only take $90,000 out, Yep. Then the then the interest rate the interest that's running on the money is it running on all hundred and fifty thousand dollars or is it only running on my just as like a typical line of credit it's, you're it's only like paying yeah you're only it's only accruing interest on what you've used so you have a hundred and fifty available yep. to you total you have about ninety thousand that'll be available to you in the first year you do not have to take all of that ninety thousand mm -hmm. you just take what you need the rest of it. Um, can be left in a line of credit, which is an extremely, extremely important thing about one of the, uh, about the HECA mortgage, because unlike your conventional bank line of credit, the line of credit on a HECA mortgage is guaranteed. And what I mean by that is it will never be called, it will never be canceled, it will never be cut, it will always be there. And the other nice part about it is that it has a guaranteed growth factor to it. In other words, whatever dollars are in that line of credit yep. are going to grow year by year by year. So if I so so if I'm Frank and Mary and I'm, I'm just literally just want to play it safe. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I've talked to clients about this. They said, you know, if you want to make sure they're nervous because they don't have any ca enough cash in the bank to sure. this house, and I'll say, look, sure. what you do is. Go get your, get your reverse mortgage. It's Absolutely. going to cost you something, and we're going to talk about that at the end because I think people really have a sense that these things cost a fortune, right? Correct. But it's going to cost you something, but now you've got this line of credit. It's just sitting there, and in Frank and Mary's case, it would be $150,000. And then if you need it later on, now you don't have to worry about now going you don't to get have a reverse to mortgage. It's just, exactly. You can just go write a check. And, you know, so, so, so give me an order of magnitude number. Once again, if I did this today, mm -hmm. and I had my 150000 but I wasn't using it, right, at what is, it t is there a typical rate at which that amount would grow in terms of the, the availability? Yes, there is. De depending on which program you go with, yeah. you know, there are various options, and the options are in the interest rate, really. Yeah. And it depends on what the goal is, what the need is, and what you want to accomplish will depend on which one of those programs yeah. and which interest rate you go with. And so the, the line of credit will grow at the interest, whatever that interest rate is, yeah. plus 1.25 percent which is a mortgage insurance premium yep. and that's something for another show that right. takes way too there. long right. so um, let's say the initial rate of the mortgage is 2.75 percent yeah we add 1.25 per that to that now we're which at four percent yeah so that any money that's in the doll in the line of credit yep. in that program is guaranteed 
to grow at 4%, at 4%. above the one-month LIBOR. The LIBOR is the index. So if the LIBOR right now it's at 0 0.20, so that line of credit would grow at 4.20% today. Right. So in, in, once again, an order of magnitude numbers, 4% of 150,000 would be about $6,000. Exactly. So if I took 150, didn't use it at all, the, the next, following year I'd be able to actually borrow 156. 156. If you didn't use it again, be 163, 4, whatever that number comes into. It. Now, now a couple and, of questions. And I didn't mean to cut you short. No, 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 that's fine. I was just going to go to a scenario that I was you just, just mentioned. Say, so I'm going to step ahead. So now I sure. borrowed the money, right? Mm -hmm. But now I decide, oh, we really don't want to live in this house anymore, right? We sure. really decided we're going to go to assisted living. We want to sell the house. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Can I sell Absolutely. the house? Absolutely. The, the work all I have to do is just, I just pay off this mortgage. You just pay off the mortgage. It's, it's really no different than a conventional mortgage. If you have a conventional mortgage on your house, the bank gives you the money, they put a lien on the title. When you decide to move or sell the house or whatever you want to do, you pay back what is owed to the bank and you keep the rest. Right. The now, exact same thing goes same on with a reverse mortgage. And, exactly and if, if it's Frank, if it's me and, me and my wife Mary, right, and mm -hmm. I die, does that trigger the mortgage, or do they have to wait until she dies before the mortgage? Gets no. It, well, one thing, you know, in a spousal situation, you yeah. want to make sure that both spouses are on the mortgage. Yeah. Extremely, extremely important. Um, you don't want to put either spouse at jeopardy in case one passes away. So the way the with both spouses on the mortgage, yeah. as long as one is living in the property as their primary residence, that mortgage will continue. So in other words, if... So if one passes away, yeah. if one needs to transition to a nursing home, to assisted living, as long as one of the spouses remains in the home as their primary residence, yeah. however they set up this mortgage, whether they have it as a line of credit or a monthly income, that will continue. So now I'm going to take, I'll take a bad case. So, okay. so, so once again, if I'm in the nursing home, my wife is still at home, I don't have a problem. But if she dies and I'm in the nursing home, now mm -hmm. what happens on the reverse mortgage? Yeah, you know, at that particular point, um, it makes no sense to hold on to the property. You're in the nursing home. You know that's your last stop. Right. Um, at that particular point, the estate would have a 12-month period to satisfy the mortgage. They're given an actually an initial six-month period yeah. to satisfy the mortgage. Yeah. As long as they show the lender that they're making a concerned effort to sell the property or to pay off the mortgage, right. however they're going to do right. it they can get an extension up to 12 months. I see. I and see. so you'd have 12 months to do that. You sell it, you pay off what's owed, the estate would keep the rest. I understand. I understand. Mm -hmm. and so now, now I'm just going to get to the last, kind of the last sure. piece because I want to get people, give people kind of a sense of this. Absolutely. It, obviously, and I think your best, at, one of your best options is if people are interested, Go look at the federal website. Go look at the government website because it isn't like go right to the source. Because they're not trying to, you know, that's not a bank trying to sell you something. They're just the regulations. Okay. Correct. Tell me about costs. If I'm Frank and Mary and I'm borrowing that hundred and fifty thousand dollars on my three hundred thousand dollar house, mm -hmm. right? Do, using the reverse mortgage, about what is it going to cost me to get that line of credit? Even even in, like in sure. my example, if I'm okay. not using any of the money. How if you're not using any me? of the money. There are a few different factors involved. Yep. First, you have what is known as the mortgage insurance premium, yep. which uh, in this particular case would be 0.05% of mm -hmm. the uh, value of the property. Mm -hmm. So $300,000 home, there's $1,500. You also have an origination fee. An origination fee, if you were to compare that to a conventional mortgage, it's like points. Yeah. You can have a rate here. If you pay a few points, the rate drops a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Same yeah. sort of idea with that. So you have an origination fee, which is set by the feds. It is 2% of the first 200000 of value and 1% of anything above and beyond that. So for, a th for, a, for, th a, for and the value is $300,000. So 2% of, of the 200000 be 4000 Correct. And 1% of the remaining hundred be one. So for five hundred thousand, um, it's a five. That's five thousand. That's five thousand. So now we're at sixty-five hundred. Now we're at sixty-five hundred. Okay, and then you have your typical closing costs of any mortgage in the world. Any of us that have had a mortgage have attorneys gone through fees, those attorneys' fees, appraisals, title recording, searches, right. all of that. So sake of argument, let's say that comes in at couple thousand. Couple dollars. thousand. Right. So now we're at what eighty-five hundred. That's right. And yeah, so you know when I look at things like this, whenever there is a need, mm -hmm. something is going to take a hit to satisfy that need.
cash on hand, 401k, yeah, yeah. stock portfolio, or is it the home? So in this particular case, you're looking about 8,500 would be the cost. They would set up in this scenario, we're using easy math, so they're setting up a $150,000 line of credit. And to go back to what you were saying before that you've had folks talk to you about this, I've done this for folks that it's strictly to set up this line of credit as a security blanket to know that the money is there, God forbid, if something happens. And, and, and if I'm, once again, if I'm Frank and Mary, right, so I'm doing all of this, can I, can I pay that $8,500 out of my $150,000 line of credit? Yeah. The, or do I have to bring $8,500 no, from my savings to the close? The answer to that is yes. <laughs> you can right. do either way. I can do um, you, I want. you can roll it right into the loan if right. you want to pay any of the costs up front. You yeah. can pay it up front. The other thing you can also do is you can make payments. The with a reverse mortgage, there are no required monthly payments. Right. There's nothing there to say that you can't make one. But if I don't want it to grow, so if you don't want it to grow, I you want to keep up with the accrued interest, or so you want right. to knock that balance down to zero. Sure. You can, you can pay, you can make those payments, and those payments that you make revert right back into the line of credit. So but, they're available to you. Steve, this has been unbelievably useful. Right? Thank you. Well, you know, I say that. I think it's been unbelievably useful. Well, I useful. hope it has been. <laughs> it's been really, really fascinating. Tell me again, so what's the name of, what's the name of your company? My company is I Reverse Home Loans. I Reverse Home Loans. Correct. And, and I've, I've asked Steve um, to do some kind of a, a, a banner that we'll be able to put on the, on the sure. show, just so that yeah. if, you, if you need to reach them. Yeah. Um, if, if you've got more questions about this, as Steve suggested, go to the website or just Google reverse mortgages, look around. Look you know, around. Talk to Steve or talk to somebody else. The main thing is, for so much of this, is to be doing this stuff before you need it, right? You don't want to be key. trying to figure out how to get a reverse mortgage because you need to do the adaptations to your home yesterday because you're coming home from the hospital, you know? You need you, it, shop around, see what it looks like so that at least you know how to do it if you needed it. And you may, for the reasons that we talked about, want to do it in advance. Steve, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Arthur. I hope it's this been was a pleasure. helpful. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> really well, that was good. It. Yeah. Right. Yeah.